Give it up for Josh Johnson. I don't know if y'all saw this uh, demure thing that's taken off. <laughs> Why are y'all groaning? Oh my God. In case you don't know what it is, in case you haven't been alive <laughs> for the past couple weeks, uh, Demure is this one TikTok, this one TikTok star, this whole thing. It's not like a, a whole group of people. It's not like somebody super famous already said something. There's this one TikTok by this creator named, named Jules LeBron that was just sort of getting ready for work and said, you know, look, look at how I'm dressed. Very demure, very mindful. And demure and mindful have like really taken off. They've really become this big, big thing. People are talking about how I'm demure, I'm mindful and everything. People have made all these response, TikToks to it and stuff. But basically, she was just saying like, you know, look at how I'm dressed, keeping it chill, a little bit low key and everything. And by and large, everything that I've seen that's come from it has been pretty positive. I know I'm not on the whole internet, but like everything I've seen is nice, which is kind of cool because usually when it comes to like TikTok as a movement or like challenges or like anything popular, it's usually not as positive. You know, most TikTok challenges or trends are mostly like, hey, y'all, watch me punch my grandma on the back of the head. <laughs> It's usually something that causes harm to, you know, you or someone else for everyone's entertainment. And, and we watch, we watch all the time. It's like, hey, y'all, watch me while I call in this bomb threat to the Vatican. <laughs> you know, like there was, there was one thing, I don't even know, it, it, got, it got so bad that they would talk about TikTok trends happening that I don't even think were happening, but they were believable because all the stuff that really was happening. Like, I'm pretty sure there was one where maybe I'm falling for, like, a trick, but I'm pretty sure there was one TikTok trip where people just kept blowing up the urinals at the boys' bathrooms in their high schools. <laughs> and I was like, ah, man, maybe, maybe they really are lost as a generation. You know what I mean? <laughs> so then you see something like Demure, and it really, it really kills the whole... You know, the, the sort of generational gaps that we have, it's hard to keep pushing them away when they're being all nice and stuff. You know, you see these, see these young Gen Alpha, Gen Z just being sweet. You almost don't know how to react. You know what I mean? It starts raining. Maybe you're a boomer and then out of nowhere, you know, this young person comes up being very demure. pops an umbrella right over your rainy head. You just stand in there like, Fox News did not prepare me for this. Uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, thank you, I guess. This is weird. You sure you don't want to punch me in the back of the head and film it or something? Like, no, it's just nice to see like a trend that's at least like feeling mildly positive as it spreads, you know? Because a lot of them start positive and then quickly turn. And I haven't seen this one turn yet because the whole definition of demure is uh, like modest, shy, you know, mindfulness, obviously self-explanatory, being mindful and stuff. Because the other TikToks I've seen Jules make have also fascinated me because, you know, she'll do little stuff. Like she brought donuts to the hotel staff that took care of her at the end of her stay. And she was like, this is being demure. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess we redefining it. I had no idea. I thought, that's cool. I'm like, I'm, I'm saying, cause I'm, I'm happy about it. You know, and I think that that's really awesome because for a long time, I didn't know if like a good trend could catch on. You know, we, we like deep down, whether you like it because you like it or you like it cause you love to hate it. We like watching the bad stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like we what like like Jackass would have never been a franchise <laughs> if we didn't love the idea of a guy just standing there and then his friend running behind him and kicking him in the balls. Like that's <laughs> you know, 
We had jackass when we were little, and that just spawned into like a different ver Now everybody can do jackass. Everybody was doing jackass the whole time, by the way. It's just when we filmed it, it sort of just sat at home. Like they just became home movies. There wasn't an internet to push it out to the rest of the world with, you know? And so, I don't know. I mean, I hope, I hope for those that enjoy it, it continues. I hope it doesn't, you know, morph into a, a different thing because I feel like the internet's very good at that. You know, the internet's very good at like taking something because it's so decentralized, like taking something that starts out very good and then morphing it to a place where, you know, maybe five years from now, there's just a kid that runs up and punches a grandma in the back of the head and goes, to me Nah, but I hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> I, took a, I took an improv class um, when I lived in Chicago with a kid who was uh, Buddhist, right? And he was Buddhist in a way that was very sincere. He wasn't like that. Um, you know how sometimes when you go off to college or something and you meet someone who's like hardcore Buddhist, but they're like, a white dude with dreads that's always trying to bang, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm like, no, I don't know if you following, really. I think that you just wear the beads. I think that you, I think you're disingenuous. You're just trying to use it to lower some, some walls, you know what I mean? <laughs> How could I be bad? I summered into bed, you know what I mean? Like, kind of has those vibes. But, but my friend who, who I met, is the person that truly fascinated me because he was someone who had a lot of joy and, and a sincere joy. Not like, you know how there's, there are people that you meet sometimes that are full of joy, but you can tell the joy is because everything's going right right now. It's very circumstantial joy, right? It's like lottery winning joy where it's like, guys, of course. He had a, he had a nice joy that wasn't swayed one way or the other by like little things happening, you know? Because the circumstantial joy I'm talking about, it, it gets knocked over with a feather, right? That same person that's so joyful one day, you see them the next day, they're like, get out of my way! Like it's, <laughs> and that's also normal, that's part of being human, right? Like it's not, it's not normal to be happy all the time. If someone is, watch them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, if somebody's happy all the time, they need to be on a list. <laughs> They're hiding something, right? But he had a very, very sweet and sincere joy that was calm, kind of quiet, a little bit to himself, but happy to talk to anybody, happy to engage with anybody and everything. And I think that because of who he was as a person, it sort of fascinated me what his philosophy was for life because he didn't, te he didn't teach Buddhism and he didn't, think of Buddhism as a religion, he thought of it more as a, as a sort of philosophy, right? It was his answer to the psychology of his mind. And we were talking one day, because I was just sort of asking him how he came to it and everything, because he, he was white. And <laughs> regular, regular haircut though, like regular haircut. Like. But you know, we were just, we were just chatting and he was explaining at least to the best of his understanding, the four noble truths to me, right? Because the first noble truth is that there is suffering in the world. And that's an undeniable thing, you know? We all suffer in different ways for different amounts of time, you know? Some suffering is physical. Like when you, when you wake up in the night and you're thirsty. <laughs> and you swear you know your home but you're walking in the dark because you don't want to wake yourself up too much with the light. And you don't sleep with shoes on. So your feet, your toes are at their most vulnerable. <laughs> you get up and you're walking around and in the kitchen, you get a little bit of that fridge light. You almost squint a little bit. That's too much. You grab your water, you pour it in your glass, take some sips, and now you got to make your way back. Halfway tired, 
in the dark, right? And as you're walking, maybe, maybe you're a parent. And maybe even though you know this home like a back of your hand, you don't know that there's a Lego waiting. <laughs> there's a Lego waiting to be stepped on, right? There's a skateboard near some steps waiting to take you out. <laughs> to put you on your ass, right? Or maybe you don't have kids. Maybe you're a bachelor. Maybe you're just living on your own as a single person, but you make your way back. And for some reason, tonight, there's just a, a little bit of extra width to that bed frame. <laughs> and so you get close to the bed and you get ready to hop in and then... And so you suffer. <laughs> no. But a lot of suffering isn't physical. A lot of suffering, you know, genuinely is coming from a, a mental place. You either suffer in what you think is going to be the future or you suffer over the past as it happened. You know, those things that happen that are very, very embarrassing. Maybe, maybe you hold on to a mistake that you made too tight. In your mind's eye, it's the only thing that you can focus on. And most of the time, you can shut it out. It's probably whatever you're thinking about right now. <laughs> but most of the day, you're pretty good at shutting it out, but then you have a quiet moment, like in the shower. And while you're in the shower, your brain just goes, remember that time? <laughs> you remember. remember. Remember that time that everybody was like, wouldn't it be fun if we jumped in the pool and then you just jumped in the pool but then the other person was like, oh, I was never gonna jump in the pool. <laughs> so then you were just out here in the pool by yourself and you can't swim. So then you, you were hoping that everybody jumping in would just mean that everyone floated a little bit higher or something. And so now you were, you're like fighting to get, to get to the top of the water and then people, you can hear them be like, is he drowning? Like the, it was like, it was like a question because you flailing so hard. You flailing so hard that everyone's like, is he drowning? And then you're like, what? these are supposed to be my friends. Why aren't they jumping in the water and help me? Do we not want to jump in the water so bad? We just want to talk about jumping in the water that no one's going to come save me right now. And so you're flailing and you're flailing. And then finally you just hear somebody, somebody at the party, one of your friends say, yo, stand up. And then you realize you were on the shallow end of the pool. <laughs> so there's, there's a suffering. <laughs> and then, you know, there's, there's a suffering for the things that you think are, are gonna happen in the future, right? Things that haven't even happened yet. Usually, it's us, because of our imagination, we're one of the only, I mean, look, this is us saying it, but as far as scientists know, we are one of the only species that has real imagination in that way. So we're, the, we're, we're some of the only things on planet Earth suffering in that particular way, right? Most things are living in the moment, right? You know, but we're the only ones putting things onto the future that haven't even happened yet. Like, let's say you, you're in a relationship, and you love this person, but y'all fight from time to time. And you, and you fight, but you love each other, and maybe it's been a long time. You've been together for a long time, so you know them. You know them deeply. You know them in a, in a fundamental way where no one else knows them, right? So then sometimes, when something happens, you can tell we're probably gonna have a fight. We're probably gonna have a fight because I know them and I know what happened and I know how they react to things. I know how I react to things. So we're probably gonna have an argument, right? So then maybe you're driving home, maybe you're taking the train, maybe you're on the bus, but wherever you are, because you know there's about to be a fight, you decide to have the first fight. <laughs> the first fight is in your head because you practice it, right? Like, <laughs> The, the first fight is you just sort of shadow boxing, right? <laughs> you know? Uh, you do it too. Uh, that's not my fault, right? Like you just... <sighs> and so the first fight, maybe things don't go so well. Maybe the first fight, because you have to imagine the whole thing, you imagine them reacting a little harsher 
then they might even react. Because you don't know because you haven't been there yet. It's in the future. It hasn't happened. You have to make this thing up. But now you're suffering because you're imagining that they said something to you that was a bit too far. And they always do this. And I can't stand when you do this, right? You always, in my head, take things too far before I have the conversation with you, right? And so you get home and you already mad. You already pissed off because in your mind, you lost the first fight, right? So now when we have the first fight, I'm remembering the first, first fight. So now I got to get my get back from losing that first fight because they had such good logic in my head when I was fighting them before that I came ready. I'm already ready to plug up all the holes in my own argument, right? And so then, you know, you start fighting and then you start the fight by being like, why are you all it? And then you realize you're yelling and you're like, why am I yelling right now? And it's because you had a fight already. You had suffering you didn't even need to have. There was no reason, right? And then there's the second noble truth. The second noble truth is that there is a cause to the suffering. People, we, we don't just have to suffer endlessly for no reason, right? There is a cause. This is where the concept of karma comes from and everything. Because if you, if you understand the suffering and you understand the cause, you can end it, right? It can be over, you know? Like, I have a friend who I love very much, and he, and he has a lot of love to give, but he keeps, because he can't understand the cause, he keeps getting his heart broken, because he keeps, okay. <laughs> he keeps getting his heart broken because he keeps trying <laughs> It's gonna sound however it sounds, but <laughs> he keeps trying to save young ladies who do not like him, <laughs> but do enjoy dinner, right? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, like at a certain amount of dates, I'm like, yeah, dog, I think if, if she liked you, she would call you sometimes. Like, like if, you know, because he's a very, he's, he's, he's a, he's a lover, but it's, uh, I don't know if he's thinking about why he keeps feeling this way. And if it keeps happening, if the same thing keeps happening with different people who don't know each other, maybe there's a cause. And maybe the cause is something you're doing. Maybe the suffering can end. Maybe. Or maybe he's just real good at paying for dinner. I have no idea, but like, I just... It seems like when I talk to him, like, hey, it doesn't have to be like this, right? And then there's a third noble truth. Third noble truth is that uh, you can end the suffering. It can't, like, it, it doesn't have to go forever, right? Like, the second one is that there's a cause, and the third one is that there will be an end, Right? It doesn't have to go on forever. You can release yourself out of this sort of cycle. And then the fourth one is that there's a path. There's a path for you, a way to end the suffering, right? Which I think is great. I think that there's nice that there's an answer at the end. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of religions out there that just tell you, like, it's pretty bad. <laughs> and it will get worse. <laughs> You know, there, there are some Buddhist monks, right? There's some Buddhist monks in, in Thailand, and they're in a specific region, so I don't want you to think this is all of the Buddhist monks, but these particular Buddhist monks in this particular region of Thailand keep getting into trouble for not being very good monks. Because <laughs> when you think of a monk, it's unfair, but you think of a monk the same way you think of a nun. You think of someone who has dedicated their entire life, their, 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 their finances, their physical self, their spiritual well-being to the cause of whatever religion or philosophy that they've taken up, right? And that doesn't make them perfect, you know? But it does make them seem like someone who is going to be holy or be grounded. You know, what, whatever the thing is, right? And these monks are pretty rock and roll. Uh... <laughs> These monks are going ham, okay? These monks are having such wild scandals. Like there was one temple, right? Where all the monks in that temple got busted by the police 
for doing meth, right? <laughs> and it's hard to conceptualize a methy monk, right? Because you usually think of them as calm and still, but you can't be on meth. <laughs> you know, I've never seen someone do meth and then calm down, right? That's not part of it, you know? I can only imagine what that one monk who did the meth first must have told the others. <laughs> you know, does a little meth and it's like, y'all. If we do this, we ain't gotta do all that sitting. Like this, <laughs> this is about to hit, okay? <laughs> you know? It was another scandal where there were some monks who basically, I say got in trouble, I, I think they got arrested for stealing um, millions of dollars in donations from people who were basically donating to, I guess the monastery, but just generally, the same way you donate to like any church or anything like that. And that one baffled me because I thought one of the whole principles of Buddhism was like, guys, I don't need anything. Like it's just, it's me trying to better myself, trying to get better, trying to get to the next level and everything. So to get, like to give, to give the monks millions of dollars is asking for trouble. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? To give the monks a rapper level of money and then not expect them to live that rapper lifestyle <laughs> feels like an unnecessary temptation, okay? You know, like I'm pretty low key, but if you gave me around $8 million, I might go a little wild for a day or two. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's tough. It's tough when you're, when you're a monk and then you try balling out because you in the same clothes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, when you roll up to a strip club, everybody know you're not supposed to be there. <laughs> like, you throwing it up and making it rain, and then everybody's like, where's it even coming from? <laughs> Does the robe have pockets? <laughs> you know? There have even been some, um, some monks that got in trouble for straight-up violence, right? Um... Which is, which is terrible and terrifying. But I will say, as, as a monk, if somebody messing with you, you do kind of have the element of surprise. Because <laughs> they're sure nothing's going to happen, right? Like you just poking a monk and poking a monk and poking a monk, and then they just hit you with that blood owl. <laughs> you know? And I guess it's just, it's just, it's just wild that for such a, I, you know, I'll call it a, a religion or, or a, a lifestyle just for the sake of the argument, but like for such a uh, calm, peaceful, to yourself, um, religion of bringing yourself to the best level that you can, building an understanding of yourself and the people around you and trying to spread good in the world. It's wild to me that this section of Buddhist monks in Thailand, all they really need is Jules LeBron to teach them how to be demure, to teach them how to be mindful, you know what I mean? Can you imagine that? You imagine this. There's a monk that's just throwing out money at the strip club and everything, and then Jules is like, not demure, not mindful. Well, Mira, 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 mira,